guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I'm here with two behemoth IBM machines to do a little type test. So my collection mainly consists of manual typewriters that could be portable or the big heavy desk set ones that you could probably kill somebody with. I have a few electric typewriters in my collection, but these two machines stand apart from the rest for a couple of reasons. I got both of these machines as gifts or for free, so they're not ones that I've personally purchased, but they're definitely ones that I've enjoyed playing with a little bit, and they have a little bit of an interesting story to both of them. So this one over here is the IBM Action Writer 1 named Icarus. He was purchased on offer up for about $20 and then gifted to me. And then over here we have my IBM Selectric 2 named Holden. Now Holden has a special story. He was on TV. If you've ever seen the show Mindhunter on Netflix about the behavioral science unit in the FBI, this guy right here was a prop in that show. He was purchased in a prop house in Pittsburgh which actually serviced the show. Inside he actually has a label that says props and on the bottom he has a label that says desk 4 indicating where he belongs in the set. And I was actually able to identify him in the show. I watched every single episode and I looked for this specific kind of mark on the front of it. The ruler on the inside tips up at the end. And I was able to identify this exact machine frame by frame in season one, episode 10, and season two, episode one. So this typewriter has seen its screen time. And I got him for dog and cat sitting for a weekend. So between these two typewriters, they're both IBMs. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the IBM typewriters. This Action Writer was unveiled in 1985 as a more portable version of the Selectric. It's a little bit more lightweight. It was introduced for schools and offices. Now over here, the IBM Selectric 2 was actually introduced in 1971. Uh, as a big, hefty machine that had a couple differences between it and the first version of the machine. The first part being that you could actually change the pitch of the letters on this machine. You also had the option for error control, which allows you to do some like half spacing to fit an extra word or letter in there if you miss it. And it also features a more square-like design. Some of the older IBMs have a rounder look to them but this one is a little bit more square. What's also interesting about it is that in 1973, they introduced correction tape, which means that you didn't have to use whiteout on your machines anymore to cover up your mistakes. However, both of these machines feature correction tape and I don't know how to use either of them. So if you do, please educate me in the comments below. With that in mind, it's time for a type test and I decided to take an article out of the early typewriter collectors magazine, etc and type about the first page of an article from there. So let's start with the older machine. This is the IBM Selectric 2, probably from a little after 1973. What I like about this machine is that you can roll the paper in using the rollers on the side, which feels a little bit like a typewriter, but there is no carriage return lever. So in order to go up a line or to get your typing mechanism over to the side, you have to hit return. Now this IBM and all of your IBM Selectrics feature a golf ball kind of font design, which means that all of your letters are on this metal ball that tips however you type. You can actually change out this font mechanism by getting new golf balls or new Epcot balls to stick in there with different fonts on them. The one I have on here now is letter Gothic because I don't have any other types to put in there. As I was typing on this machine, it's a pretty easy thing to type on. It feels kind of like you're working with an old desktop computer keyboard. Pretty smooth throughout. I was able to type pretty fast. I have terrible typing technique on my normal typewriters, but I type a little bit better on some of these more electrified machines. So as I was typing, I had a pretty easy experience. It does ring a bell when you're getting close to the end, so you know to hit enter to go to the next line. Overall, it was a pretty easy thing to work with. I do wish, however, that I knew how that correction tape worked, and I know that I'm going to seem really stupid when you see this and you realize that I don't know how to turn that on. And then let's go to the IBM Action Writer Icarus. So what really threw me off when I first got this machine was I had no idea how to feed paper through it because there are no rollers on the side at all. But I did notice this lever at the top. And when you insert your paper, you can actually use this lever to grab your paper and roll it through. It'll roll it through to a certain level. And then you can actually hit these buttons page up and page down to move your paper up a line or two or move it down a line or two. 
Now the typing font mechanism on this machine is actually more of a daisy wheel design, so it's a little bit different than the golf ball, but you can change out the fonts on either of these machines. And as I was typing on this, I feel like I went even faster on the Action Writer because it seemed to have even less tension on the keys than the Selectric. I was going along just fine, kind of in a groove, if you will, and then the tape ran out. Now, unlike a normal typewriter, these have a different ribbon mechanism in them. This was designed by IBM to make it easier to change out the ribbon so you didn't get it all over your hands. They type on a ribbon that's almost like cellophane that has an ink on one side, and they are in these cartridges that you can just kind of plop in there. This machine has probably never had its type tape thing changed out, so it ran out just randomly as I was typing halfway through the page. The good news is that they still make these cartridges and they're available on Amazon. So I was actually able to purchase a new cartridge for the IBM Action Writer for about $10 and it'll be here tomorrow. So between these two machines, let's do a little bit of comparing. I really like having both these machines in my collection because they're so different than any of the other typewriters that I have. If you're looking for a traditional typewriter experience, you're gonna wanna go with a manual typewriter. If you're trying to dip in a little bit to the electric typewriter world, you might go with a more electric typewriter that still looks like a typewriter, but is electrified. But if you're looking to go really out there, you might wanna get yourself an a Selectric machine. They're really heavy, they've got some cool functionalities to them, and I find that if I'm typing longer projects, I don't mind reaching for something like this because I feel like I can type better on them, I type more correctly using home row keys, and I seem to go faster on these two machines. So if I mess up a page, I don't mind starting over because it didn't take me as long to produce that page in the first place. I also like that you can change out the fonts on both of these machines. You just have to get new font pieces to go in there and every once in a while these pop up on eBay or on Shop Goodwill and you can get yourself a couple different golf ball selectric things or a couple more of those daisy wheel things to insert in there, although I've never changed them on either machine. I also like that the ribbon comes in a cartridge so I don't get it everywhere <laughs> and I like that they're a little bit easier to find to just snap into your machines. Between the two of them, I think I do prefer the IBM Selectric, just because I feel like it's a little bit cooler looking and it's got a really neat story to this one specifically. I have played with this one a little bit longer though. It is so, so, so heavy. So it is kind of one of those machines that you have to plop and leave. I carried it around a couple times, but it is not worth carrying it around from apartment to car to other place. It's just not a portable machine. The Action Writer is designed to be a little bit more portable though, and if that's something you're looking for, this even has a handle on it for you. I've never had to do any repair on these machines. I know that can get tricky on electric typewriters because there's so many other things that could go wrong that are difficult to know how to fix. But between the two of them, they're in great condition, and I'm very happy to have both of them in my collection. So if you wanna see some more typewriter videos, I've done a few that feature these typewriters against others in my collection, and you can see some of those in the description below. We also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I wanna thank you so much for watching today, and remind you, you're just my type, writer.